Some may think shopping malls is where this is at its happiest. I say it's leaving. Hey gearheads, do us a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell so that you never miss a video review from us. And while you're at it, do us a huge favor, go find us on Facebook and Instagram, both at GT Garage Talk, where you'll see behind the scenes stuff of what we're driving next before it's up on YouTube. And if you wanna hear some interviews with people from throughout the automotive industry, go check out our podcast. You can find us at gtgaragetalk.com. Hey gearheads, I am with a very, very special car today. This is a 2016 Volvo V60 Polestar. And what makes this wagon so special besides this awesome Rebel Blue paint job is what lies under the hood here. So this is not your average grocery getter. Yeah, you can haul people, five people in fact, yeah, you can haul stuff way back in the back and it's very convenient for that. There's a little pop-up divider for all your groceries. But why you would buy this car is right under the hood here. All right, gearheads, so this is something you absolutely do not see every day. It is a transversely mounted straight six. It is a three liter, 24 valve turbo straight six. Like I said, producing 345 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. That is mated to a six-speed automatic with manual shift mode and all-wheel drive. And that is the key right there. This small lightweight wagon with all-wheel drive is a blast. And I'm sure it was built for hunting around in Swedish winters. I'm kind of wondering what they could also package under the hood if they can fit that thing in there. But that straight six is producing 345 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque in this lightweight thing with all-wheel drive. It is a blast and it'll scoot down the road for sure. This also has a special sport suspension with Olin's dampers sticking with that Swedish thing. Yes, this is a Swedish car, my first in fact, and I can't wait to show you all around it. Okay, gearheads, I can't complain too much about this front seat. So it's very comfortable. You've got your automatic uh, gear selector with lights letting you know exactly where it, it is in position and flappy paddles so you can row through the gears yourself. It, it's a bit of an outdated center stack. I'm not gonna lie, the screen's a little small. This is very Volvo in nature. Uh, you've got large controls for volume and your climate control. This right here goes through all of your uh, screen input and it, it's a little clunky, it's a little outdated, but you're not buying this car for that. You're buying it for cargo hauling ability and hauling ability. And fit and finish in here, pretty nice, can't complain. Engine start stop button. And my favorite digital dash, I think of any vehicle I've driven to date. All right, gearheads, you may want to know exactly what it's like sitting in the back seat of this people mover. And I am sitting behind myself, 510. Still got plenty of room back here. And you've got amenities like armrest with cup holders and a little bit of storage. So that's nice. And heated rear seats. Again, Swedish car, it gets cold there. I love the pillar mounted air conditioning back here. And though there's no at forward or aft adjustment, it, it's still a very comfortable seating position back here. And you get the same trim along the side that the front gets with 
that suede insert. So back here at the back, typical Volvo styling. I love that they ditched the boxy styling of my youth, but there is plenty of room back here in the back. They put a 12 volt power outlet back here for you. But what is really interesting is the cargo divider with grocery hooks for all your stuff. And like I said, it's got as much room as my wife's compact SUV, but it's a whole lot more fun on the road. Oh, this thing is too good. All right, gearheads. So I already hear you wondering, what is it like to live with a Swedish performance vehicle? And I'm gonna say, not too bad. Uh, this is a little outdated in its technology. The screen is a little small, things of that nature. But given its performance nature, I'm here on the brick streets of downtown Tyler, Texas, and it's a bit rough. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, probably one of the rougher vehicles I've taken down these brick streets, and it can beat you up a little. So uh, that being said, if rough roads are in your future or in your life probably not the vehicle for you though if you've got some nice corners to carve uh, this vehicle could do it for you i will say uh, some features i've noticed about it you put it in reverse and the rear view mirrors automatically tilt and point directly at your rear tires so you can see exactly where you're going you've got a rear view camera you can see there's my rear camera with trajectory lines and there's pointed straight down so you can see exactly how close you are to an obstacle back behind you. But pretty awesome little camera system uh, for its time. I made mention of the Swedish Olin's performance dampers and on roads that aren't antique brick streets, it, it's not that bad. Uh, I, I would say that these are probably some of the roughest uh, that I can test on regularly. And oh, there are some places where it just tears you up. How does it do over train tracks? Well, it's rough. Oh. Going back to the age of this car, there are some spots that have uh, seen a little bit of extra wear and that's where the driver is always touching. So the door pull right here is a little worn, the plastic all around that. Uh, I would imagine that's a fairly inexpensive, cheap plastic bit. Again, going back to this digital gauge cluster, I think it is probably the favorite gauge cluster I have seen in many of the vehicles that I've driven. So you've got this huge sweeping tack uh, surrounding a digital speedometer and driver information system. Some other outdated tech, the navigation system. That looks like a Garmin from 10 years ago. It could use a little bit of help. Um, this interesting keypad. You've got your vehicle information right here and shows you what is enabled and disabled. And you've got hard buttons for all that control down here. But again, the way that you interact with the screen is uh, through this dial right here with the OK and exit buttons. We're gonna find some roads to test out this Turbo 6. Here we go. speed check myself a lot in this thing because it it wants to go over 300 horsepower nearly 350 and a vehicle small and light and all-wheel drive it's fun plus when you need to pass somebody you can roads of East Texas are where this car is going to be happiest. Yeah, it, it'll cruise on the highway. Yeah, it'll run and get groceries. It'll do all that stuff. But finding back roads 
making the most out of those stiffened Olin's dampers and just the taut suspension of this vehicle, it, it, it begs to be driven fast around corners. Steering in it is quick and direct. You, you point it, it goes. This thing is deceptively quick for what it is. I mean, it's a wagon for crying out loud. But this one is very special. In fact, the fact that we're even able to find one, thanks to our friends over at House of Cars, is quite impressive. Uh, production on these was very limited, and this is a very rare car. So if you see one, now you know. Not the quick, quickest accelerating vehicle I've driven, but still, no slouch by any means. This is not a straight line car. And if you're buying it for that, I have better ways you could spend your money. But my goodness, it's good in the twisties. It's just so good in the corners. It loves it. It loves it. I love it. But most of the people I'm coming up to today don't quite expect that from a Volvo. And that's perhaps the craziness of this car. Uh, Volvos, especially here in the States, don't have much of a reputation outside of comfortable Swedish luxury. Uh, this one breaks the mold a little and can maybe make people stop and take notice. Being a Volvo, it does come with a ton of safety features. It's got lane keep. It'll let you know when you're drifting. It'll let you know if you're getting too close to the vehicle in front of you. It's got Bliss blind spot monitoring. And I actually like, it's got internally mounted side uh, blind spot warning lights. So you don't have to worry about weather outside, making your mirrors hard to see or anything like that. The light's actually in the cabin with you. Nice touch. There we go. back roads is where this is most at home and it's oh so much fun this thing just moves down the road like it's effortless big sweeping turn hug that corner Curvy roads, fun car, more of this place. Man. All right, I'm getting into a speed trap now, so better mind my P's and Q's. And that's gonna be tough. I almost don't believe the speedometer on this car. It says I'm doing 45 and a 30, but it feels like I'm creeping. Like I said, deceptively quick this car. So there you have it. It's compliant, it's fun, it's a bit rough, but it moves five people in comfort, has just as much storage capacity as a compact SUV, and it's loads more fun, especially when the roads get a little twisty. If you want to know more about what we're doing, go on and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a future review for, uh, from us. Hit that like button if you like this content and want to see more as well. If you want to see some behind the scenes footage of what we're shooting next or uh, just where we're going and what we're doing, go find us on Facebook and Instagram, both at GT Garage Talk. And you can go to gtgaragetalk.com to listen to our podcast where we talk to people from throughout the automotive industry and like to share stories with people with all kinds of crazy automotive histories. Until next time, bye.
Screw that.